hey, what's happening, you guys? This right here is the Proclivity Podcast, and we're coming to you live from Reno, Nevada. I'm your host, and I have here co-host Emily Rodella. Emily, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. Had my 31st birthday yesterday. Felt the love. So 31 years old. 31 years old. Who would have thunk you would have made it this far? <laughs> well, it's in all seriousness, it's it is a blessing, right? <clears throat> my husband and I talk about it like, oh, do you feel old? It's like, well, no, age is a gift. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. something to think well, about. You have six more years to catch up to me. <laughs> we'll see what happens. All right. We'll see what happens. Let's do it. One of the things one of the things I was thinking about today, before we get into the podcast, guys. This is just our normal <laughs> jibber jabber. Before we get into the podcast today, one of the things I was thinking is I for sure have the best business partner ever. Now, there's many facets to that. But one of the best reasons, you guys, that I have the best business partner is for how many years? Two years? Three years? <laughs> Did you run Coffee Bar? F- five. Uh, I worked there for five years. Five years. Guess who gets the best cup of coffee almost daily? This guy. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but you don't have a barista as a partner, most likely. <laughs> Small percentage chance that you have a business partner who's a barista, but I do. I'm not exactly sure what I bring to you. <laughs> uh, I don't have like that skill set. Mm, I feel like that's mm. the, the one of the bigger things I bring to the table. So <laughs> you bring a lot, Joel. Yeah, yeah. All right, I received that. Guys, welcome to the Proclivity Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about fitness. See, we have this thing called the Proclivity Pyramid. Emily, real quick, break down the Proclivity Pyramid. The Proclivity Pyramid is our way of looking at where to focus on for your overall health. So, as we know, with the pyramid, the base is the most important. It's the foundation. So instead of what most people think of as, oh, I need to work out more, you know, improve my exercise or eat better, we first start with our language, our mindset. What are the words? What are the things we were telling ourselves and how we're speaking day to day? Because that will point us in the direction that we want to go or what we're telling ourselves, right? Next, on top of that is structure. Structure in terms of, are you getting to bed on time? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you structuring your day so you can hold boundaries and get the things done you want to get done and accomplishing the values that you truly have so you can achieve your goals? Above that is then nutrition, in which we call or label it as metabolic flexibility. So we help people become more metabolically flexible using carbs and fat for fuel more seamlessly. So you ditch the energy dips, you ditch the hangriness, and you have a more steady, more energetic day. And then on top, we have fitness or what we like to call movement. How are we moving our body daily? And that's the gist of it. And that's what we're going to talk about today, guys. A lot of you guys come because you want to hear the nutrition part, right? We talk about some of the the language components. Um, We talk about structure. We've had some great guests on talking about structure. And today we're going to talk about fitness. Why? Because a lot of people are confused about fitness. They wonder, how much should I do? What should I do? Should I do aerobic, conditioning, cardio? Should it be high intensity? Should it be strength training? Should I be walking? Should I be running? How long should I be doing it? These are the same confusing questions that are brought to you by, guess who? The fitness industry. The fitness industry is a $32 billion industry. Isn't that wild? The fitness industry is $32 billion. The, in, the nutrition is $72 billion. And there's, no, there's not the same return on investment. If you think you were investing $32 billion, there would be a lot of fit, healthy people out there. 
Just like if you were investing $72 billion, you'd think that there would be a lot of healthy bodies, yet there's not. Why? Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of confusion and they actually want to create the confusion so that you go, oh man, that thing didn't work. So I'll go to this thing and then they'll break it off and they'll create another fitness regimen or another nutrition program. And that creates confusion and so on and so forth. Yet, as we talk about in the proclivity method, simple and easy are not the same thing. It's actually quite simple to eat healthy. It's actually quite simple to move every day. Yet, not always easy when your schedule's slammed, when you got kids, mm -hmm. when you got a full-time job, right? When there's sugar around, when you're going out to eat and you don't know the oils and so on and so forth. So today what we're going to be talking about is we're going to give you guys a, a, a blueprint of our fitness regimen, Emily's and mine's. We're going to talk to you about the differences between aerobic training, strength training, the guidelines that are put out there by the World Health Organization. Um, how often should we be moving? Should we be counting our steps? Should we not be counting our steps? Should I be getting up? Is, is stretching important? Should I be mobilizing all the time? All these things we're going to be talking about today. So buckle in. This is going to be for you. If you've been struggling with your fitness regimens, it's hard for you to get going. Uh, you don't know what you can to do. You've done a whole bunch of different kind of fitness regimens or pro programs. We're going to talk about it today. Emily, you ready? Let's go. Let's go then. Okay. First and foremost, let's talk about our fitness journey. Why, why, why should people listen to us? When did you start working out, playing sports, all that kind of stuff? I started playing sports, I believe I was four years old, soccer. Um, I played soccer all the way up in, into college in, in terms of intramural in college, <laughs> intramural soccer. Um, but that's what I started off with. Um, I played club and then in high school, um, did you know, track and field, volleyball, basketball, soccer, skiing, um, but skiing and soccer were my main sports for sure. So that's, I started from a young age, stayed active that entire time, never took like a season off, you know? Um, and within that actually what really helped was my mom got me a personal trainer for just a few sessions so I could become confident if I were to be in the gym, right. With weights specifically. <clears throat> so looking back, Yes, sports was huge in that starting of my fitness journey, but that was likely equally as important because it gave me that confidence to, if I were to go in the gym, right, come college time, to have confidence in knowing what I was doing, at least with a few different movements. And so you got a personal trainer when? How old are you? Um, I must have been 14 or 15. So beginning of high school. Okay. All right. So you got, you got a, you got a personal trainer, gave you kind of the, the background from there. Were you consistent in your exercise or did you continue to play sports? What did it look like for you? Yeah, I wasn't consistent with that. Cause like I said, it, it was, it was simply an intro, um, maybe five sessions total of like, okay, this is how you, um, warm up. This is some options with dumbbells of like a bench press, right? Um, some core moves, some leg moves. Um, but I was consistent. I have been always consistent in terms of sports or exercising. So it's sports all the way until college. And once I got into college, I started off with a, a marathon training class. And then I got into CrossFit. And then I took a triathlon training class and kept doing CrossFit. <laughs> and that was it for a long time. So I've always been consistent in something hasn't always been the same thing. And that mix up of, of fitness, did that start pointing you in a certain direction when it came to where you're at now? Did that help? Yeah, for me, having that variety helps me narrow down. What do I actually like and enjoy? 
what's most, and especially now as a mother, like what can I fit in? And it gives me a variety of options, right? Get on a given day. In an ideal world, I would love to stay in a group class, right? Um, a couple of days a week. I love the community aspect, yet having the knowledge of different types of workouts and again, workouts in quotation marks, right? Moving my body in some way, um, having that knowledge of the variety is super helpful when it comes to, okay, I, at least I'm getting something today. I can find something to do, whether I have weights or not, whether I am in a gym or not. So for sure. And you hit some there, right? It, what I can do something. There's a lot of people out there that are like, if I miss my class or if I do, don't do my workout as written or prescribed, then mm -hmm. it's not worth it. I mean, we put this big weight mm -hmm. on us that it has to be a certain way, yet there are plenty of days where I go, cool, I'm going to do the rodeo. Okay, y'all want to know what the rodeo is? Tell us what it's it is. It's my go-to. <laughs> I, need, I need nothing. All I need is my body weight, and it's four rounds, 25 push-ups, that could be narrow, wide, uh, uh, hand release. Hand release. Yeah, all the, all the things. Oh, then it goes into core workout, sit-ups, V-ups, alternating V-ups, so on and so forth. And then it goes into air squats. When we hit air squats or some type of squats, it could be lunges, so on and so forth. And I do that as quickly as I can. And I'm done in sub eight minutes yet I got movement in and guess nice. what the rest of the day I'm going to be thinking move 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 that's going for a walk that's getting up that's taking the stairs that's whatever the case is I'm going to keep my body mm -hmm. moving and so it doesn't have to be this huge ordeal of I got to make the class I got to do is prescribe what we have found is actually less is more and we'll, we'll get into our prescriptions in a little bit of what Emily does, what I do and why we do it. But to, mm -hmm. to talk a little bit about our, our fitness journey, we've been through it guys. We, we have 15 years of fitness coaching in one way or the other. Uh, we have 30 plus years of doing our own fitness and exercise. And so we've done a lot. We've done the bar classes, we've done the small class, the boutique gyms, the long training, uh, triathlon, we've done it. So we've done the extreme stuff, 34 mile race, and we've done the rodeo, four rounds, 25 mm -hmm. push-ups, 25 sit-ups, 25 air squats. And all of it is yes, awesome, because mm -hmm. the body wants to keep moving. And so starting to break the mindset that we need to be in the gym 5 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. every single day doing this workout, buys, tries, or CrossFit, or bar, or yoga, or whatever, being able to break that and opening it up a little bit, not saying you shouldn't do it, and if you enjoy it, great. Yet, if you all of a sudden start going like, oh, I'm not really feeling yoga anymore. Okay, cool. Go for a run. You want as many tools on your tool belt when it comes to movement mm -hmm. and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. And specifically, I was just talking to my brother-in-law and he's like, I have to make it to a class. I have to have someone telling me what to do. He has a full gym set up in his house. He's like, it's just so hard for me to, you know, or do my workout, complete it. And it's harder for me to push myself when I'm on, on my own and don't have a specific time set. And, and I get that. Yeah, especially when you become a parent and you're short on time in general, whoever you are, it's so helpful to have a backup, as you said, or what I say as a non-negotiable, like your rodeo. Yeah, yeah, we'll get more into that. But I'm curious to hear what, um, when did you first start exercising and what were the sports you played growing up? So I, I very young age, um, I was playing soccer and t-ball and baseball. My parents got it, got me into sports at a young age. I was on skis under the age of five, you mm -hmm. know, um, here in, in Northern Nevada. That's a normal thing um, for kids to be in ski programs because we have so many ski resorts up here. So 
um, very active uh, growing up in high school. I ran track and football. That was, those are my two main sports. So of course, lifting was a big thing as a football player. Mm -hmm. So I was in the gym in middle school, lifting weights, having no idea what I was doing. I love that your mom <laughs> had at least even just a personal trainer to be able to mm -hmm. get the base of lifting weights. Um, mm -hmm. Yet I can, I continued uh, through high school after high school, I went into college, kept working out. It wasn't until the end of college that I actually was introduced to CrossFit 2009. Mm -hmm. And I started doing this whole CrossFit thing, went over to somebody's garage gym. Okay. Classic <laughs> CrossFit folks and started doing <laughs> CrossFit. And then my life went into becoming a, a CrossFit coach. I was a, a weights conditioning coach at North Valley's high school, um, varsity football coach and continued in that coaching realm going, getting my level one, level two. I was one of the, the first, I want to say the first five to get their level three in Nevada in general, um, level three CrossFit certification. Mm -hmm. And I just continued down that path. And it wasn't until the pandemic in 2020 where I really started expanding. I mean, I mountain biked, I ran, I did that kind of stuff, more like secondary tertiary from CrossFit. But when there was no more barbells and there was no more gym, you really went to, oh, well, what else? And then I started running my own business. Well, I don't have a ton of time, right? Gyms aren't open. Okay, well, what if I just took these dumbbells and, you know, did this way? And what if I moved every single day instead of thinking Monday through Friday? And so things started really changing from there. My fitness journey uh, continues to mold and change just like my nutrition mm -hmm. does, just like my health does, and just like my personal development does. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's talk uh, about the state of fitness. This is just a baseline, guys, of being able to understand fitness in general, fitness movement, right? We're going to give you some numbers here because it's good to be able to understand a foundation of where the, the fitness industry is at, where people are at with their health and fitness, and why it's included in the proclivity method, yet it's at the very top. It's not the base, but it is at the top. So we mentioned this earlier in the, in the podcast. The fitness industry, which is measured by revenue of, the, of gyms and health and fitness clubs, right, boutique gyms, so on and so forth, is, was $32 billion in 2022. $32 billion that people are spending on going to the gym, doing classes. This could be your yoga. This could be your global gym. Um, this could be your CrossFit gym, so on and so forth. So $32 billion. And I like investing. And so I always look at things and go, okay, cool. If I'm investing $32 billion, what's my return? Right? 10% return. Wow, that'd be incredible. 5%. Shoot, even a couple percent on $32 billion. That's a great return. <laughs> Yet, the World Health Organization has shown that only 23% of adults meet the physical activity guidelines. Emily, what are the physical activity guidelines? That's a great question. <laughs> I was just going to ask that. <laughs> hmm. who, who knows? And like, who's deciding this, right? <laughs> well, yeah, well... There, there, there is a baseline, right? That, that, that who, the World Health Organization, well, what they have, on. right, 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 so, right. So they, they do have their requirements, which is 150 minutes of moderate to intensity physical activity, and two days of that being muscle strength activity. So 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Does that equate to right? Yep. Um, yep. And with two of those being strength training days. <clears throat> so right. That that's their requirement, right? So which which yeah. isn't bad to say, right? Um, but I, yeah, there's a lot more that I would require of that <laughs> in terms of specifics. Well, no doubt yet. When we look at this, we're, they're asking for the minimum. And they, if you, if you actually look into this in the world health, health organization, they actually say like, and more and more is better yet mm. 23%, right? Only 23% are meeting mm -hmm, that. Meet that. That's 150 minutes a week 23 percent that is really low yeah. 
particularly if we're talking about people are spending $32 billion. That means people aren't going to the investment that they're putting in. Why? Mm -hmm. Why isn't it working? Why do you think that this percentage is so low? Oh, lots of reasons. Um, our culture, our struck, our culture in our jobs in terms of, oh, you got to keep grinding, you got to work, 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 right? Not having those boundaries set being, and then being unclear. I would say that's number one. Number two is being unclear in terms of a person of knowing what, how do I exercise, how to make it consistent. Right. And a lot of the times we're like, oh man, I have to go to the gym for an hour or two hours every day in order for it to be worth it. Like you said in the beginning, or, you know, just don't go at all. Cause I don't know what I'm doing. And so that over analysis leads to paralysis type. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, the, the list goes on yet. One of the reasons that in the proclivity pyramid, we put structure is because so many people are lacking structure what gets scheduled gets done guys if you put it in your calendar that you're going to go to the gym at this time in the calendar your chances absolutely increase i would say tenfold right that's not an exact number yet i would even say it's higher than that that's one piece the second piece most of the time people put the hurdle way too damn high mm-hmm 75 hard, right? All these challenges. I got to go win, right? It has to be a three workout a day. It has to be super hard. I have to get super sweaty. I have to, my lungs have to bleed. My muscles have to burn. Mm -hmm. And if your body isn't ready for that, and they, there's a reason why we talk about hurdles. Okay. I ran the hurdles in high school. There's a big <laughs> difference between running <laughs> JV hurdles and varsity hurdles. The hurdles go up. I was an incredible 100 meter 110 uh, hurdler as a JV. Almost broke a record. As soon as it went up, my short little legs w wasn't the same. Right? <laughs> and so making sure that you, one, can schedule it. Two, that you start lower than you think. Because... Mm -hmm. 30 minutes a day to, re to meet the physical activity guidelines of the World Health Organization. And only 23% of people are meeting that. Mm -hmm. that. 30 minutes a day, folks. That's not crazy. And the 30 minutes isn't your high intensity workout. You actually can do less, right? They suggest even less if you're doing like a 15 minute rodeo workout where your heart rate is going to jump up to 150, 160. Mm -hmm. They go, oh, you can do even less then. The 150 is like going for a brisk walk, right? Doing a couple mm -hmm. curls and squats with some dumbbells and kettlebells. We're not talking crazy stuff. And still only 23% of people are meeting this. There is something going on here. And so this is a good baseline to understand. If you are listening right now, are you part of the 23%? Can you say without a doubt, you work out 30 minutes a day, five days a week, easy. And that's just the, the walking and, and being able to do strength training. Are you, are you, can you say you're doing that? Be honest with yourself. If it's no, it's okay. Are you structuring it? Is the hurdle too big? And we'll talk mm -hmm. about, again, our prescription, what we have found working with so many people of what works. Another thing to think about when it comes to movement is your total energy expenditure. Can you tap into that, Emily? Yeah. So <clears throat> that's your, your total daily energy expenditure is what you're expending in energy outside usually of your dedicated workout, right? So it's how many steps you're getting in. It's how much energy you're burning throughout the day. Otherwise that's soup. That's very important. And it's what a lot of nutrition coaches use in terms or when they're calculating out calories, right? Because you want to know what is your average expenditure. So we know how many calories do we need to intake for whatever your goals are. And there have been studies showing that 
you know, your, your total daily energy expenditure. So again, the steps, all the other movements, sitting, standing, walks, um, all of that is more important than the dedicated 30, 60, 90 minutes of exercise in the day. So for example, if you are sitting at a desk all day, very minimal movement throughout the day, and then you go to a 60 minute workout class, it's actually healthier <laughs> to not do the 60 minute class maybe uh, alternate from sitting to standing, go on a 15 minute walk, um, do some laundry, you know, in the morning and then do some other things at night or go on another small walk in the evening. It's actually better for longevity, overall health to have more spread out daily uh, movement rather than that high intensity 60 minute workout. Right. Does that make sense? Makes uh, total sense. Makes complete sense. And why are people not moving more why are they why don't they have a higher uh, total energy expenditure because a lot of us are sitting in front of computers right it's, it goes back to that culture the work hustle culture we've done corporate wellness uh programs and that is a huge thing that we focus on like hey everyone encourage each other to take a five minute break to go take a walk around the building go walk, go outside five ten fifteen minutes right and so we have a pressure of like, Oh, I need to get all this work done. And we have a culture that's, that's not part of the norm. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. not difficult to do again, simple needs are not the same thing. And so we say, Hey, let's keep it simple. Again, five, 10, 15 minutes. Let's just implement it. Right. And make it part of the culture. So that's a, the big one I see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Coming back to, again, coming back to that, that structure of being able exactly yeah. to create the day that you want to live. It's, it's important stuff. Mm -hmm. It's important stuff. So I'm going to ask you a question and we're, I, I believe we're going to do an entire podcast on this and I'm interested in your opinion on this. We have three facets of health. Nutrition, exercise, and sleep. How would you rank them? <laughs> All of them are important, yet how would you rank them? Yeah, we've talked about this a few times. It's a tough one. It is a tough one. I toggle between sleep and movement first, yet I, if I had to make a decision, I would say sleep first, movement second, and nutrition third. And, and mm. it's, so, it's tough because they're all very important. Right. Yet that is how I'd, I, I yeah. would rank them. How come? <laughs> well, as we talk about sleep is the elixir of life. I know we know that if you get poor sleep, it, you know, even, uh, what is this less than six hours a night on average, you are likely to live 10 years less in your whole life or develop a disease. Mm -hmm. Um, you ha it affects your blood sugar in one night of poor sleep. And we know with poor blood sugar health, it, that leads to so many other issues such as overeating, eating more sugar, having the hangriness, poor metabolic flexibility, which leads to these other diseases. So that's why I would put sleep first, right? And we all, we all know we're just less happy when we get poor sleep. We make poor decisions overall. And we know the way we talk to ourselves and make decisions in our day affects the rest of our life and the trajectory of that. So that's why sleep out is number one. Number two, we know there's so many studies showing exercise. It's so important for longevity. We want to have more muscle on our body. So because that's directly, mm -hmm. directly related to living longer. That helps uh, also with blood sugar, the more muscle we have. That helps prevent us from falling when we're older, right? And if we, even if we are overeating, if we're exercising, it's going to have less of an effect. Yet I'm the mm -hmm. nutrition person and I know how important nutrition is too. And so it's a tough one, but that would come third, again, if we had to rank them. I, 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 what would you say? It's interesting. Cause yeah, I'm, I'm on the, uh, I'm on the edge. I know the benefit <laughs> of exercise and I know the benefit of sleep. I'm a huge sleeper. I'm, I'm all about it. Mm -hmm. My life completely changed. 
when I pivoted from, hey, I was doing high intensity CrossFit workouts five to six days a week, yet I was getting five hours of sleep. Yet mm -hmm. those high intensity workouts really did help me even though I had low amounts of sleep, of being able to stay relatively healthy. People look at me like relatively healthy. Now my nutrition wasn't the best at that time as well, yet I would, it's a close call for me of going exercise, sleep, <laughs> nutrition. And, and I'm sure a lot of people are going like, what, what are you talking about? Nutrition is the, the third one. We're saying all of them are important. <laughs> What we're saying is, what is the, sure. the low hanging fruit here uh, to be able to go, hey, what what's really going to be a bang for your buck? Um, all of them mm -hmm. are going to. Yet, it's just, it's an interesting question that I tend to like asking other right. fitness professionals and really seeing where it's at because it's really tough. You're looking at all three going like, well, how the heck am I supposed to choose that? Right? <laughs> yeah, it's... it's Definitely tough. Good conversation to have. Good conversation to have. All right. Well, let's get into the prescription here. Our prescription, what we've we've done. It's so interesting. Again, there's so much confusion. We've had people ask us before, you know, should I be doing more cardio or more strength? You know, should I be working out every single day or should I be taking rest days? What is your current prescription and belief with your movement and with your fitness? Mm -hmm. That's another good question to ask car. If you had to choose cardio or strength, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. And you'll see in what I explain next, I, uh, if I had to choose one, oh, so tough, but I, if I had to choose one, I would choose strength with what I know about muscle and longevity. So, so what I do and I, uh, this has changed significantly since being a mother. So similar to Joel, before I was a mother, I did CrossFit six to seven days a week. Some of those days would be two, two and a half hours of CrossFit, <laughs> potentially plus a run. <laughs> it was a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and as any parent knows, or business owner even, um, that time to devote to that exercise or anything else really decreases, right? So since being a mother, I found the most important thing is consistency. So what can I be mo most consistent with and what's, uh, what is, what, how can I make it easier for myself? Take away as many obstacles as possible. So that's why I go back to, oh, I have at least some dumbbells. I, I, I'm very lucky. I have dumbbells and barbells and a, a rig at home so I can do these things. That's not my preferred choice. Honestly, I love group classes. I love fitness scene with other people yet I have everything at home for the days where I, I don't have the time to go out of the house and do a group class. So for me, it's having consistency. What can I do most consistently and what is my non-negotiable? So as you said, what's your go-to, I have a go-to or a non-negotiable and that's okay. If before dinner, I haven't gotten any movement in, even if it's not like a, even if I haven't gotten a walk-in, I will do something. I will, while well, food is cooking, even if I have my toddler, I will go into the garage or even our living room and do something with some dumbbells, you know, whether it be some burpees, lunges, air squats. So like my really low minimum workout is three rounds of some level of push-ups, uh, lunges, perhaps a plank or sit-ups, right? Depending on where I am with my, with my core health postpartum. Um, so whether it's either before dinner or before I hop in the shower for the night. That's my really low, uh, non-negotiable for myself. Right. So there's that in, in an ideal week in a, in one of my average weeks, I go to one or two group classes, whether that be high intensity or strength based type class, that's about 45 minutes or a Pilates bar class. Joel and I have both learned to love Pilates <laughs> or bar classes it really helps those glutes and the core functioning. <laughs> Um, and I, again, I love group classes. I love the community aspect. I love someone telling me what to do. Right. So that's, those are my like fun workouts. And then I have my two to three garage workouts that range from anywhere 10 to 30 minutes, literally just 10 to 30 minutes. <laughs> and if I am on the shorter size side of things, I really prioritize strength. 
So I'll do five by five back squats or I'll do a deadlift or bench press or some pull-up strength work. All right. Cause I'm still working back on my pull-ups postpartum. So that, and again, that usually starts with some strength and then moves into some sort of dumbbell workout that Joel has helped me with in terms of programming um, or some kind of mini Metcon with body, body weight exercise movements. And then two to three of the other days during the week, I simply either do a run. So Joel and I, every Tuesday, we do some sort of a run anywhere from 20 to 20 minutes to 45 minutes on average. Now that could be a really easy jog, or that could be some hills or some stairs. And then um, I, do, I hike at least once a week with my dogs and or toddler in my, on my back or with a stroller and we, we go around the neighborhood. And so we do lots of walks. And again, if I'm short on time and I'm taking my toddler to the park, I turn it into a workout. So I will jog there. I will do some air squats or I will do some pull-ups on the monkey bars, like little things here and there um, to get that daily movement in. So that's what most of my weeks look like. Yet a big part of my focus is the daily consistent things. So that means at work, we have a standing desk. We can go from sitting to standing and vice versa. I try and save most of my sitting time for when I'm driving and when I'm eating, for example. I try and stand, shift positions. I'm not just stuck in one standing spot the whole day. Shifting positions, moving my feet, doing some air squats or lunges here and there going on a five minute walk around the neighborhood, coming back, those kinds of things. And then I, I do a lot of movement with my child too. So yeah, it's, it's changed a lot since having a kid, but, um, it's awesome. It's, it's a lot of different movements. That's fun. And, and we were just in a, um, a bar class and you had, you were, uh, had your shirt off, right? You're in your sports bra. There's all these other <laughs> girls around. And y'all, Emily looked jacked. Okay. Like I've Thanks, seen Joel. her in her <laughs> fittest before she before she had Dansby. Mm-hmm. She was jacked then mm-hmm. and she's jacked now. And it is absolutely different in terms of both how mm-hmm. Emily and I were training at Double Edge and how we're training now. Yet our bodies, if you, you all see us, it's like, wow, they look really freaking fit. And it, it shifted a little bit because at double edge or at mm-hmm. CrossFit, very performance based. So we were, we were chasing performance goals. Hey, just a little bit more training could add another 10 to 15 pounds on my clean jerk. That was a big deal. Then now what's a big deal is making sure we get mm-hmm. to work on time. That when Dansby <laughs> throws up all over Emily, she has enough time to be able to switch out and be able to put on new clothes and still get to work. And having <laughs> that buffer, that time, you folks, is the most important, valuable thing you have for your fitness. Because listen to me, if you are running on razor thin time throughout the day, and what I mean by that is that you have very little wiggle room throughout your day where it feels like you're Mm -hmm. constantly feeling the pressure. This is detrimental to your health, to your fitness gains, to your nutrition, because you are now elevated into a sympathetic state. So if you Mm -hmm. feel that you need to get that hour and a half workout, and I'm saying an hour and a half, but most people are like, no, my workout's only like 45 minutes or an hour in my group class, drive time, chat time before, chat time after before you know it you're an hour and a half two hours in an exercise or a workout we've timed before we've done it well there's a big difference between two hours and a 30 minute quick dumbbell workout at home and when i mean 30 minutes i mean three two one i start my watch if you guys follow me on instagram i start my watch when i start moving and i stop my watch when i'm done and majority of time, it's going to be between 20 and 25 minutes. Start to finish, done. Warm up, strength component, done. How much time that saves me, gives me that space so I don't feel like I'm constantly under pressure. If I'm not constantly under pressure, my body's able to recover from those strength workouts. 
I, my body is in a more parasympathetic state, so I don't have high glucose levels. All the things that we've talked about in so many different um, podcasts, it's, it's okay if you like to do high intensity workouts, group training, you're training for something, yet you need to know that there is going to be a sacrifice somewhere else. We all only have 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And what are your goals? For yeah, most people, yeah. I want to look good. I want to be strong. Totally. And yeah, really, truly figuring out what are your desired outcomes. Full picture. Again, we go back to what does your perfect day look like? And I'm so glad you mentioned that because that has changed my life in terms of my anxiety. Having that buffer time. Whew, I used to live, yeah, literally back to back to back to back to back, rushing from place to place. And just like in the car, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm five minutes later. I, right when I get in there, I have to start a meeting. And there are times where I fall back into that when I don't structure my day properly. And it, it makes a huge difference in my mindset. And as we, you just mentioned, and as we know, huge effect on your overall health because of that parasympathetic versus sympathetic state affecting your gut and leading to just not feeling good. And again, if you're someone who does it day in and day out, leads to chronic illness for sure. 100%. All right. So we covered. So Joel, your... what do you do? You, you... Yeah. yeah. What do you yes. do? Yes. Yes. Now it's time to talk about mine. Now you guys may, if you follow me on Instagram, you may see it. I, I, I hashtag very busy on all the pictures I take on my watch because for the longest time, when I was the general manager at Double Edge, man, I was running all over the freaking place, 65 hours a week, working, working, working like crazy. And so I was constantly on the gas pedal and I would throw around the word busy. Oh man, just busy day. Yep, busy. Yeah, you know things, it's just busy. And yet I didn't want to live that way. And I have yet to find somebody that when I say, hey, when you, when you say the word busy, does it make you feel all tingly inside? Do you feel light and expansive? Do you feel like you're ready to take on the day? No, you feel pressured, heavy, slow. Why would we use a word that creates such tension day in and day out? I mean, people will literally greet each other and be like, hey, how you doing, Pop? Ah, you know, another busy day. What? I want tension? Get mm -hmm. the heck out of here. And so when the pandemic came and the gas pedal came off for a lot of us, I went, I'm not going back there. Mm -mm. I'm creating so much space that I can get on a scooter in the middle of the day, take my shirt off, roll around with music in my ears <laughs> and love it. Right. Or take a walk in the middle of the day or knock on Emily's door and be like, Hey, Let's go over here and get something to eat. Why? Because we can, because we created the space, because we don't <laughs> use the B word. That is a dirty, dirty word. Okay. And so I created a fitness regimen to reflect that. And it's what I do to this day. And I have never been as fit overall than I am to this day at 37 years old. That's after doing CrossFit competitions. That's after playing multiple sports, intermittent, all of it. I'm the fittest now than I've ever been. And I, in, when I'm saying fitness, fittest, I'm saying least amount of pain, uh, aerobic capacity, strength, balance, so many different factors that go into me saying, Hey, I'm the fittest I've ever been because I could go out right now. I could leave this podcast and go run a half marathon. No problem. 100% could absolutely do that. I could also you go to the gym, full marathon. grab a barbell <laughs> and do a 405 pound deadlift because I've done before on a three day fast actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so my, my point here is, is that I thought I had to do more to be fit. And what I found is that I need to be more consistent daily to find my greatest fitness. So about two years ago, I made the commitment to myself and the identity shift 
that I move every day. Non-negotiable. I move every single day. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, when I created the identity, interesting enough, that's one of the things we work on, <laughs> that I move every day, it took the pressure off that I need to hit this certain workout. I just need to move. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that included walk. Sometimes that included the rodeo. Sometimes that was a 13 mile run. Sometimes that was a high intensity workout. Sometimes it was a bodybuilding workout, but I changed the way that I looked at it, took off the pressure. And I said, Hey, this body's going to move every single day because that's what my body wants to do. And so what my schedule looks like, and if you ever want to jump on my schedule, feel free let us know, reach out to us on our Instagram, shoot us an email. Mm -hmm. Joel at proclivity.co, Emily at proclivity.co. We have a 30 day dumbbell program that is to a T what I do. To a T what I do. And it's produced results after results after results. And people think it's crazy. Check out our last podcast with Allie. And she talks about it how she mm -hmm. used to work mm -hmm. out two and a half hours a day. And now what does she do? Dumbbell program. And she's never been happier, mm -hmm. never felt better, all of it. And so what my schedule looks like is three times a week, I do a dumbbell strength workout at home. Sometimes I'll go outside and do my dumbbell pro workout outside. It lasts 20, 25 minutes. But, but always I do a warm up. Always with your shirt off, right? Go ahead. <laughs> that part of it? Yes. That is, that is <laughs> part of it. I want to catch the sunlight. But we're sure <laughs> um, that vitamin D, you know what I'm Just saying? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I do three days a week, dumbbell strength, one day a week of high intensity. So I used to do high intensity every day, but I realized that actually created a lot of inflammation in my body because I wasn't recovering. It's fine to do high intensity if you got the recovery, yet you don't need mm -hmm. as much high intensity as you think you do. That is at least one thing that I mm -hmm. found out. And there are definitely studies out there uh, that, that back that as well, that we don't need high intensity every single day. Yet there's a lot of gyms out there mm -hmm. that do that. Two times a week, I do zone two training. So zone two is keeping my heart rate in that zone two. So for me, it's about 130 beats per minute. And that's just slow and steady. That could be a hike. And that's going to put me, you know, a below the 130. It's not saying I have to get to the 130. I just need to be below it. Or maybe it's a run. I used to go mm -hmm. every time I ran it, it had to be a, a seven minute or seven thirty minute mile. Now it's like 10 30, 11 minute miles. And I love <laughs> it because I'm just cruising, looking at the birds and it's wonderful. <laughs> Yet I might go for an, an hour or two hours. And that's fine too. And sometimes mm -hmm. I go for 20 minutes or 30 minutes. That's what we do. And then one thing mm -hmm. that I brought back from uh, way back in my Globo days before CrossFit was some bodybuilding work. <laughs> some, some, some eccentric, concentric, slow tempo, cables, bands, all these kind of things are going to be really good, good for the, the joints um, and in not being a compound movement multi-joint movement, right? Mm -hmm. It's just one mo joint moving, which I enjoy too, too. So when you add all that up, I'm working out every single day. And if one of those days I don't do exactly what I programmed and I program for myself it, as a coach coaching me and I go to my app and I just <laughs> follow what I, I programmed for myself the week before, right? And Mm -hmm. I follow that yet. If I miss something, I do the rodeo or I do what Emily's talking about. I, I make sure I go for a longer walk. I take the stairs. Um, I go play. I do something to be able to move my body because mm -hmm. I move my body every single day. So that's my prescription. Very similar to Emily's, right? There's some group classes that I hit in there that would line up with the hit. Mm -hmm. or the strength. There are mm -hmm. times I go to the Globo gym, shout out to South Rack. I've been hitting South Rack up recently. <laughs> Beautiful gym, by the way, shout out to them. Um, yet that's my structure 
What do you think about it, Emily? Yeah, I love that. That's an ideal. You know, if someone, cause there's people who are like, well, <laughs> it depends where you're at, right? Where are you starting? Where's your base? Again, we come back to the barriers, lower your barrier to entry. And for some people, that's just, I'm going to move my body for 15 minutes every day. It doesn't matter what it looks like. This is just to create the habit to start with, right? What you just listed out is ideal. So that's what I would tell anyone. That's a great place to work towards. So that is also what I, it's very, like you said, very similar to what I like to do. Yet mine's um, quite a bit more flexible in terms of what specifically it is and when it, I do it. Um, because again, like yesterday I had a sick kid, right? I had to stay home from work and there, there's certain times you can't get around it. Yet there's still things I can do in the living room, like I mentioned. So yeah, love it. Totally. The strength is huge. It's love again, it. priority number one. Are we getting strength at least two, three times a week? Which is huge. And actually, the older we get, the more we want it. And and the higher intensity the strength yep. is supposed to be. So like anybody who's listening that might be in their 50s, you're actually supposed to be lifting mm -hmm. more intensely. The older that you get, you should be working strength training more often and balance work when you start getting into your 50s and, and higher, 50s, 60s, and so on and so forth. Uh, you want more strength training, more balance. It, aerobic capacity is a lot less, right? We, I would really suggest walking as your aerobic capacity at that point, um, mm -hmm. or casual bike riding, mm -hmm. or if you like to mountain bike, I mean, if you want, if you're, you love, you're in great shape, you're 50, 60, and you, you want to go run a half marathon or so on and so forth, that's great. Yet that shouldn't be your baseline when you're getting older. It should be more strength, 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 strength. Do you agree, Emily? I'm going to keep, Oh, 100%. You want to get as much muscle as possible because as we age, it gets much easier for our body to let go of muscle. So that's why we prioritize strength training along with protein because that's what keeps your muscle there. Again, going back to, I think I've mentioned this before, but the, you know, one of the leading causes of death are uh, falls in the elderly in breaking your hip, right? Because usually if you stumble, you trip, a lot of these older people can't catch themselves due to strength. So if we can avoid that, avoid the falls, keep that muscle, and for so many other reasons why muscle is so helpful in longevity, right? But that's one example. So yes, I agree. <laughs> Perfect. So we've talked a, a lot um, in this podcast. We've talked about, hey, what we're doing isn't necessarily working because we only have 23% of people actually following through of doing 150 minutes a week. We talked about the key components of that is structuring, make sure it's in your calendar and making sure that the, the hurdle is a lot lower than you think. And then we gave you a perfect example where we came from, which is, you know, hour and a half, two hours a day, high intensity, huge strength training, and now where we're at now, which is getting more closer to that. Hey, if we get 30 minutes a day, seven days a week, incorporating strength training in these other areas, that's a really successful mm -hmm. week. And it shows both Emily and I, if you're looking at it in, in just the aesthetic arena, I've had a lot of people ask me, man, what are you doing? And of course, Emily looks super freaking fit. <laughs> and it comes down to the consistency, right? Simple and easy are not the same thing. Can you move every single day? If you're blowing yourself out on these super hard workouts, or it's being super difficult because it's eating up so much time throughout your week that you get done doing four workouts in a week, because on average, here's, here's a, just a tip, right? Just from a fitness background, helping, helping run double edge and being a GM for six years. The average, when we ran reports of up to five to 600 people, the average person came in two and a half times with an unlimited membership, two and a half times. That was the average person. That lines right up with that 23% mm -hmm. of not hitting the, the 150 mm -hmm. minutes a week. And so you want to make sure that the consistent movement daily is more important than the big class throughout the week. We gave you what we do. And feel free to reach out to us if you're like, man, should I be doing some hit or some zone two? What does that look like? It's a lot simpler than you think, guys. We have programs mm -hmm. for you. 
very simple, right? Again, simple needs are not the same thing. We'll repeat that a million more times because it's true. <laughs> and scalable, we though. Ha- we scalable. Have- oh, yeah. Oh, totally scalable. Totally scalable. We have these programs for you to be able to, to get done. So to wrap this up, to put a bow on it, Emily, what are your top three tips when it comes to building out a fitness regimen or fitness program? Mm. Top three. Number one, as we mentioned, consistency. So th- again, like you said, your mont- or your affirmation is I move every day. So something around that so you can maintain consistency. Because I talk to so many people, clients, right, who are like, and I tell them, I'm like, oh, I don't do CrossFit every single day. Like I move 15 to 30 minutes tops every single day. They're like, what? How? what? I did not expect that. And it's true. You stay, you stay in shape if you stay consistent with just simple daily movements, not even a workout or exercise routine, right? So that'd be number one. What can you do daily and consistently? Number two, prioritize strength. Minimum two days a week, but ideally three to four times a week. That can be simple bicep curls. That could be some squats with a dumbbell or kettlebell. Uh, Simple as that. And then if you can get some kind of cardio in, it doesn't have to be a half marathon. It doesn't have to be um, like 10, 400 meter repeats. As Joel said, you can do zone two training twice a week, right? Two, three times a week, casual, or you can bump it up a notch and do some sprints or some hills or some stairs. Yet that would be it. So one, how can it be consistent daily? Two, prioritize strength. And then how can we get a little bit of cardio in there throughout the week too? Yeah. Yeah. And I I resonate with what you're, yeah, I resonate with what you're saying, Emily. Um, My big thing is again, I move every day. It doesn't have to be huge, guys. It's so interesting. We have clients and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm traveling. I'm traveling. Cool. You're traveling and going where? Staying in a mud hut? Oh, no. You're staying at even the average motel or hotel is going to have a gym with what? Dumbbells. Or and stairs. So if you have yeah, stairs or cardio machine. There's so many things, right? Mm -hmm. Yet we don't need a ton. We're just making up excuses straight from the game. If I don't have my perfect road rack or my skier or, you know, my perfect zercher, all the kind of things. (laughs) What you need is you, your body, and the mindset that I move every single day. Do some strength training. Zone two, anywhere from 45 to 90 minutes, once to two times a week. That helps with mitochondrion health. That helps as long as you have skeletal muscle mass and you're staying in that low zone. Helps to be able to burn fat because you're in an oxidative state. A lot of the times people run too fast like I did, thinking I was doing aerobic, right? But really I was doing anaerobic training, so I wasn't tapping into the body fat. You need to go a lot slower than you think to stay in that oxidative state. That's why we're saying zone two. And you need to do a lot more strength training than you think. Yet you don't have to do five by three, 85% back squats to get the benefits of strength training. Mm -hmm. And I have tested it many times. I've done dumbbell work for the last two years, guys. Yet the other day I was hitting the same percentages of my last back squat at 80 some odd percent years ago it works <laughs> years years ago it works so if you guys have questions and if you guys want to jump on a 30-day dumbbell program it's completely complimentary you jump on it it's on a platform called true coach you're going to get access to emily and i we're there because we want you to sh- we want to show you that it's easier than you think And so this is completely free. This isn't like we're going to send you a PDF kind of thing. No, no, no. You're literally going to work with us. Give you, we're going to give you feedback. 
We're going to be able to see what you're doing, what weight you're doing, be able to make any adjustments to it. I mean, most, most coaches would charge anywhere in the realm of 180 to $250 for this program. And we're giving it to you completely free because we want you to see it's quite easy. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Simple. We can help point out those the easy part, the these barriers part. to entry. Well, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. So there it is. Now you guys know this is what Emily and I do. Emily's Emily's jacked. Anything else to put? <laughs> Joel is too. Joel is too. <laughs> I receive that. I receive that. <laughs> All right. Again, guys, if you're interested, shout out to us. Um, you can reach out to us on our Instagram or on the website and contact us many different ways, Joel at ProClivity.co, Emily at ProClivity.co, team at ProClivity.co. Say, hey, I want to do that dumbbell program. If you guys are jacked, I want to be jacked. We'll help to be able to create that fitness regimen for <laughs> you. It depends. Everybody, it depends what works for you, your lifestyle, and so on and so forth. But we're here to be able to help and be able to show you that it is quite simple to be able to create a program that, that is very digestible for your lifestyle, where you're at to get really great results. Coach Emily, anything else? No, thank you. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, shoot us a message on Instagram or email. <clears throat> We're here for you. Beautiful. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. We appreciate you guys. If you guys get a, uh, a lot of information and this is valuable to you, please take a moment to review us, to give us a, a five stars. I don't even know if there's five stars or three stars. Or just give us a review. Thanks, five. Uh, <laughs> share it. Give it to your, give it to your friends. Uh, we appreciate that. That really helps us as, as a business. Um, so send it out. Show us some love. We love you guys. And until next time. Best day ever. <laughs> Best day ever, guys. <laughs>